Miami is developing what's called Wall Street South, and it's taking massive business away from New York, San Francisco, and even Chicago. It's uh, definitely more affordable. The cost of living is uh, cheaper, 20%, 30%. The founder of Amazon.com taking his talents to Miami. Miami, I think, represents the future of America. Work-life balance. And that's something I needed leaving New York as well. I was burned out. I was exhausted. New York has lost more than $1 trillion in business, much of it going to Florida. Most people here are telling me better weather and lower taxes are their main reasons. On the average, Miami is one of the safest big cities in the United States. The pandemic started it. A lot of people left the city. It was getting dirtier. Crime rates went up. Miami seemed to be like an attractive destination. During COVID, they were like, oh, wow, you can live here too. There's no personal income tax. We have a business-friendly environment. Great weather all year round, and the summers aren't that bad. Today, construction is booming. Prices are surging. You've got McKinsey, KPMG, Equinox, WeWork. I mean, these are all staples of any big city. And then you're seeing guys like Jeff Bezos or Hiring here, Citadel, Ken Griffin, like coming down here, who are like later in life wanting to like have a change in pace. Ken Griffin, his thing was obviously taxes, but he felt that Chicago was not business friendly and not safe. I'm discovering that amidst rising crime and high taxes in places like New York and San Francisco, Miami feels a bit unreal. But is this all just too good to be true? Those articles got me down here, and then I haven't really heard much since. I pay like two grand a month to like take women out. Like it's stupid, dude. And what does it mean for locals here who can no longer afford rent? And how is this city? becoming a booming financial hub and gateway to Latin America. I do notice a lot more New Yorkers here. And I think, honestly, when I was younger, Miami always had, for lack of a better wording, like spice. The city has it all. It has the beach. It has the party scene. It has creative people. During COVID, during this way, we were talking about more people came from Latin America, but not the regular ones that just wanted to buy an apartment or real estate, but people with ideas, with money, willing to change and to, to impact and also to show the world that they were not just successful in their own country. It used to be a pit stop. Now it's the destination. Citadel is a more than $50 billion hedge fund, and it moved its headquarters from Chicago to Miami. Meanwhile, Goldman Sachs, Blackstone, and Point72 have set up offices around here. It's these moves that are setting up Miami to take on New York head on. But if Citadel, which is like one of the best paying hedge funds in the world, can really relocate and then attract all that talent who's still going to make 300 k out of college, they're going to be right. Because people are going to come, they're going to stay. I meet several people who have moved to Miami in recent years. This place is called the Hub at Office Logic. It's a 20,000 space for startups and companies, and it's the former headquarters of Crystal Cruises, which went out of business in 2020. One of the biggest draws here is housing and real estate. The average price per square foot in this building is about $500. Now compare that with Manhattan, where the average price per square foot is over $1,500. And this is a beautiful building. I'm in the 19th floor. It's very spacious. And check out this view. This kind of spaciousness is hard to come by in New York City. The cost of living is far lower. It is high compared to Florida and the South, but not San Francisco and New York City. Miami's government is investing lots of money to position itself as a hub. It's attracting tech companies and startups into Miami. There's an organization called Venture Miami. Their mission is to make Miami the capital of capital. And then there's this program called Built in Miami, a six month program for early stage entrepreneurs to help them grow their business in Miami and provide resources, mentorship, and access to investors. This place in Miami is really beautiful and honestly it's so much nicer so much cleaner and less chaotic than new york and it's hard to even compare it to san francisco because of everything that's happening there but housing and beaches aside the one thing everyone i interview here brings up is taxes see florida has zero state income tax but new york's top tax rate is almost 11 percent and if you live in new york city itself the top rate is 14.8 percent while in miami it's zero miami has always had those benefits, the taxes, the business friendliness, but it was always perceived as a place you could just go and party. It wasn't a place that was perceived as somewhere you'd get work done. During COVID, everyone sort of figured out, oh wow, you can live here year round. It's beneficial to spend six months here and maybe like five months and uh, 29 days in New York. 
I own the business. Business tax in New York was 15.3%, down here it's six. So like that alone is crazy. But this massive shift isn't just tech and finance, but other industries as well. I meet this shop owner in Miami. I see it happen. There's so many people that just moved here and they're in their early 20s. But before really it was New York or LA. She stopped living in New York and stopped living in Los Angeles and set up her business in Miami. The creative scene has just expanded so much. So many creative people. nowadays, but that wasn't the case before. Others say the work-life balance is so much better in Miami than New York. The healthiest James, like me, like lost 30 pounds, has been in Miami because I'm able to prioritize myself. But over the past few years, Miami rent prices have surged like crazy, making it much less affordable than in the past. They have dramatically gone up. When I first moved here, I had a studio in like on the 35th floor of a great building for like 1600 those go for $2,500, $3,000 now. Well, if you're a project manager where you can make like anywhere from 100 to 130 in New York, but you're making maybe 80 to 90 here, but you're paying the same in rent, it might not be worth it. When everyone and their mother moved here from New York City, it filled those up and the developers weren't ready for that influx. And we were right at the end of a boom. There are 26,000 new units under construction or in process in Miami. And that is just in this downtown area, which is about three miles by two miles. All of this has led to a housing crisis as some people who have been here for decades say they can no longer afford to live here. A lot of New Yorkers, a lot of international people are moving to Miami with a lot of money and the people that are in Miami don't have enough salary to keep up with the increasing rent. Since 2019, rent here has soared 56%. I wouldn't blame the new wave of people because I think they are creating wealth here and giving more opportunities. I also understand that there's people that have been left behind. There's just not enough infrastructure here yet to really support such a growth. I think the city needs to invest a lot in uh, you know, roads and subway system. There's huge influx of people, but the city cannot support it. Despite the surges, if you're coming from New York or San Francisco, well, you still can't compare the value you get here in Miami. Because the average monthly cost to rent a unit in Manhattan is around $5,500, while in Miami, that's around $2,400, according to data compiled by Business Insider. But let's go over four big challenges that Miami is facing to really take on Wall Street head on. Number one, New York's financial ecosystem and infrastructure are deeply entrenched, and to challenge that, Miami needs needs to build its own robust network of banks, trading firms, and legal services. Number two, talent pool. While Miami is attracting talent, especially in tech, Wall Street requires a really specific skill set, and building a deep pool of experienced financial professionals will take time and investment. Number three is cultural differences. Miami's atmosphere is less fast-paced and intense than New York's, and that might not appeal to all finance professionals that are kind of used to high-pressure environment. And number four is regulatory burdens. Building a financial hub requires navigating complex regulations, and that can be daunting for smaller or newer players in the market, like Miami. In fact, a lot of VCs seem to still not take Miami all that seriously. They're not really investing locally. They're still going to San Francisco and New York. To attract more people, it's just really going to take time. Not the best quality here, right, of like homegrown Miami founders. It's a lot of transplants. Another challenge that Miami is facing is actually global warming. A lot of things could happen in, in between, but preparing the city for global warming, that's the biggest challenge, especially a place like South Beach or Miami Beach, which they say will go underwater in 15 years. Miami is considering building a 20-foot seawall in anticipation for rising seawalls. But if Miami can overcome challenges like these, I really can see it being a prime hub for not just the US, but Latin America as well. See, its proximity and strong ties to Latin America offer access to a massively growing dynamic market, and that's providing opportunities for lots of investment and expansion. Nowadays, it has the creative of people, it's becoming more and more aesthetic in terms of creativity. And I do notice that there's a lot more New Yorkers here. I just think like people finally saw the potential of Miami. And I like it now because the thing about New York and LA is that I would walk around and off the bat you meet creatives. People will purchase their secondary homes. If you're from New York, and I've sort of noticed this trend over the last few years that I've been here, but it's really easy to get tired of New York. It's, it's a lot, it's a big city, there's a lot going on. 
So people always like to have little getaway homes and Florida is a fantastic place. Well, think about it, in New York, no one makes eye contact. You're, you see a million people a day, like you're just walking past everybody. No one says hello, everyone's mad at you. I do think Miami is the next New York, which is so crazy for me to say, because three years ago, I would have said you are insane. But nowadays, I'm like, I see it.